Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we are going to be taking a look at the world of open source AI. Uh -huh. Specifically, something called Tulu 3405B. Okay. Yeah. You know how like GPT-40 has been kind of dominating the AI scene? Yeah. Well, this one is coming in hot on its heels. Interesting. And some are even saying that it surpasses it in certain areas. Oh, wow. We've got this research article here that claims some pretty wild stuff about its capabilities. <laughs> right. So we're going to try to break it all down for you. Okay, this is good. To help us navigate this complex landscape. Ah. We have our AI expert here with us today. I'm happy to be here. All right. So are you ready to dive in? Absolutely. Let's get started. Okay, perfect. So our source material is this article called Tulu 3405B, a breakthrough in open source AI post-training. Um, it's absolutely packed with details. Yeah. But before we get lost in the weeds, you know, yeah. I think let's just start with the basics. Okay. What exactly is Tulu 3405B? Sure. And what makes it so special? What's all the hype about? Well, so Tulu 3405B is an open source AI model. Okay. And what that means is that anyone can access it and modify it for their own use, mm. which is pretty rare with these large language models that yeah. we see coming out these days. That's really interesting. So yeah. curious to learn more about it. Yeah. And what makes it even more special is its performance on these benchmarks that we use to measure the capabilities of these large language models. Oh, okay. It's been shown to outperform a lot of other models. Interesting. So it's not just open source, but it's also really good. Exactly. It's both. Okay. Well, I definitely want to dive into those benchmarks a little bit later. Sure. Um, but first, I think maybe just for our listeners who might not be familiar with like AI jargon. Yeah. Can you just give us a quick explanation of like at its core... What is this? Like, what is Tulu 3405B? Well, at its core, yeah. it's a neural network that's been trained on a massive data set of text and code. Okay. And it's kind of like a giant brain that's learned to recognize patterns in this data uh -huh. and generate human quality text. So it's learned how to write and code, basically. Exactly. That's pretty wild. And what sets it apart is its sheer size. It has 405 billion parameters. 405 billion. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, that's a huge number. Can you break that down for us a little bit? Like, what is a parameter and why does that number matter so much? Sure. So think of a parameter like a tiny control knob that kind of adjusts the AI's behavior. Okay. The more knobs you have, the more control you have over what the AI outputs. Oh, it, And with it, 405 billion billion parameters. Yeah. It's like having this super fine-grained control over how the model behaves. Okay. And it can really understand the nuances of language. So it's like having a super powered language processor. Exactly. They can do all sorts of crazy things. Yeah. It can write code. It can solve math problems. Oh, wow. And it can answer your questions with like incredible accuracy. That's insane. Like a super smart virtual assistant? Very much. Yeah. So this article highlights some pretty impressive benchmark results, right? right? It talks about Tulu scoring really high on different tests. Right. Can you walk us through some of those? Like, what are some of the things that really stood out to you? Well, one of the most impressive results was on this coding benchmark called Human Evil. Okay. And Tulu achieved a score of 94.8%. Wow. That's almost a perfect score. It is. And that means it's basically writing code at almost the same level as a human programmer. That's pretty crazy. I mean, you know, we always hear about AI taking over coding jobs. Right. This seems like that's getting closer and closer. It could be. But what makes Tulu so good at what it does? This article mentioned something called RLVR. Yeah. Right. RLVR. What is that all about? So RLVR stands for Reinforcement Learning from Verifiable Rewards. And it's like this key ingredient in how they trained Tulu. Oh. So instead of just like feeding the model data, okay. RLVR uses the system of rewards and penalties to guide the learning process. Oh, so it's like training a dog. Exactly. You give it a treat when it does something good and like a timeout when it messes up. Yeah, exactly. And this constant feedback loop helps the model learn much faster. Oh, that's interesting. And produce more reliable outputs. So it's like a personal trainer for AI. You could say that. Making sure it doesn't go rogue. Right. Okay, so we've got this massive, highly trained AI model. Right. But what's the big deal? Yeah. Why should we care about all of this? That's the important question. Yeah, like what's the real world impact of all of this? Right. I mean, the article talks about it being a game changer, but like how exactly? Well, think about the potential for businesses. Okay. Imagine like all those tasks that are currently like bogging down your employees, you know, yeah. things like 
data entry or scheduling or even like generating reports, uh -huh. Tulu could automate all of that like super fast and with crazy accuracy. So it's not just replacing like those simple tasks. Right. It's like actually understanding and processing complex information. Exactly. Like having this team of like virtual assistants right. working 24 seven, you know, freeing up your human employees to focus on like the more creative stuff. Oh, that makes sense. Strategic work. Okay. So that's like a huge advantage for companies. I can definitely see that. Right. But what about just like us regular folks? Yeah. How does this actually impact our daily lives. Well, think about like your online experiences. You know, okay. have you ever like gotten frustrated with a chat bot that just doesn't get you? Oh yeah, all the time. Tulu could totally change that. Really? Yeah, we're talking about chatbots that can actually like hold a real conversation, I... understand yeah. your needs and actually <sighs> provide helpful solutions. So no more of those like endless loops of pre-programmed responses. Exactly. That would be amazing. Yeah, it'd be way better. But it's not just about chatbots, right? Right. The article also talks about its potential in like research and development. Oh yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So imagine researchers using this to like sift through mountains of scientific papers, yeah. identify patterns. Okay. Generate hypotheses that would take in humans like years to uncover. Oh wow. It could totally revolutionize like the pace of discovery. So it's like having a tireless research assistant Bro. that can just like analyze all this data and pinpoint the important stuff. Exactly. Wow, the possibilities are really mind boggling. Pretty amazing. But with all this talk about like the benefits, you know, yeah. We also have to think about, like, are there any downsides to this? Right, of course. The article briefly mentioned, like, the cost of actually running these models. Yeah. That seems like it could be a pretty big hurdle. Yeah, you're right. Training and deploying a model like this requires a lot of computing power, uh -huh. which can be really expensive. Yeah. So it could be a barrier for, like, smaller organizations okay. or researchers who don't have those resources. So even though it's open source, it's not exactly free to use. Yeah, that's so true. So it's like this powerful tool, but it's not accessible to everyone. Right. And that's something that really needs to be addressed. Yeah. You know, if we want to democratize access to this. Yeah, I totally Maybe we'll see the emergence of these cloud based platforms that make it like easier and more affordable. That would be amazing. Yeah. To run these models. It would really level the playing field. Yeah, for sure. And allow more people to benefit. But even with those challenges, it sounds like this is a major step forward in the world of AI. Definitely. And the fact that it's open source, I mean, that really shakes things up. It does. The article talks about it challenging the dominance of these big tech companies. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Right now, a lot of the like cutting edge AI research mm -hmm. is happening behind closed doors at those big tech companies. Okay. They have the resources, <laughs> they have the data to build these massive models. Yeah but they often keep their findings proprietary. Right. So Tulu really challenges that model by making its code and its data publicly available. So it's kind of like a David versus Goliath situation. Kinda, yeah. Where this open source model is taking on like the giants of the tech industry. In a way, yeah. That's a pretty cool narrative. And it's not just about competition, mm. you know, it's about fostering a more collaborative and transparent approach to AI development. Oh, that's interesting. So by sharing their knowledge and their resources, the creators of this model are really paving the way for like a more inclusive and diverse AI ecosystem. Yeah, that's a really inspiring vision. It is. I'm curious though, if this open source AI keeps gaining traction, Yeah. how do you see the power dynamics shifting in the future? That's a really interesting question and one that's really hard to answer definitively. Yeah, of course. But I think it's definitely possible that we see a shift away from those big tech companies oh, yeah. and towards this more like community driven model where innovation is driven by this wider community of researchers. So more decentralized approach. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so potentially a major power shift in the AI landscape. It could happen. We've talked about the benefits, the challenges, uh -huh. and like the potential impact. Yeah. But I want to circle back to something you mentioned earlier, yeah. like the sheer size and scale of these models. Right. If this RLVR allows for even larger models. Yeah. What does that even mean for the future of AI? That's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. We're already seeing these models with hundreds of billions of parameters. Yeah. With RLVR, we could see models with like trillions of parameters emerge in the next few years. Trillions? Yeah. That's just mind boggling. Well, that's a huge number. What would a model that big even be capable of? 
It's hard to even imagine. Yeah. It's like uncharted territory. Mm. But some experts believe that these larger models could unlock new levels of AI capabilities. Okay. Potentially even exceeding human intelligence in certain areas. Ooh, that's getting into some serious science fiction yeah. territory. Yeah, oh, it's pretty wild. But it's definitely food for thought. For sure. I mean, if you're already seeing models that can write code and generate text. Yeah. Who knows what's next? Exactly. It's a yeah. really exciting time to be following this field. Yeah, for sure. We're like on the cusp of a new era. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. We've talked about like the technical details, the potential applications and the brighter implications. Yeah. But before we wrap up, okay, I just want to get your final thoughts. Sure. What's like the one key takeaway that you want our listeners to remember from this conversation? I think the most important thing to remember is that open source AI is a game changer. Okay. Tulu 3405B really demonstrates that open source models can compete with and even surpass uh -huh. the capabilities of those proprietary systems mm. developed by these big tech companies. Right. This is a major shift in the AI landscape. Yeah. And it has the potential to like democratize access to these powerful technologies, uh -huh. accelerate innovation, okay. and foster a more collaborative and inclusive AI ecosystem. That's a powerful message. It is. And it's definitely given me a lot to think about. But before we say goodbye, I want to leave our listeners with one final thought-provoking question. All right, shoot. If this trend continues and open source models become like the gold standard in AI, right. will we see a shift away from these big tech companies right. and towards a more community-driven approach to development? That's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. It really is fascinating to think about you know, if these open source models just keep getting better uh -huh. and they become the go-to option for everyone, right. it could really shake things up. Yeah. We might see power shift away from those giant corporations and into the hands of like a much wider community. It's kind of like the difference between a private club and a public park. Oh yeah, I like that. The club is exclusive, it's mm -hmm. controlled, and only a select few get to shape what happens there. Right. But the park, it's open to everyone. Right. There's way more freedom. And like the possibilities are kind of endless yeah. because so many different people can contribute. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. That's the beauty of open source. You know, it encourages collaboration. It encourages experimentation and things just move so much faster because you have so many minds working on it. Right. But of course, there will be challenges along the way. Of course. We can't just assume that everything will be perfect. Right. So it's not all sunshine and roses. Right. What are some of those potential pitfalls that we need to be aware of? Well, one of the big ones is making sure that these open source models are actually high quality and secure. Right. You know, you don't want people using models that are full of errors or vulnerabilities. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, of course, we can't forget about the ethical considerations. Oh, right. Just because something is open source doesn't mean it's automatically ethical. Yeah. So we need to be careful and make sure those aspects aren't overlooked in this, like, rush to make advancements. Yeah, it's a good reminder that technology is never neutral. It's not. It reflects the values of the people who create it and use it. Absolutely. So we need to be thoughtful about how we develop and deploy these powerful tools. I completely agree. It's not just about making cool tech. Right. It's about using it to benefit everyone. Yeah. Not just a select few. Exactly. It's about asking not just what can AI do, uh -huh. but what should AI do? Exactly. And that's a conversation that everyone needs to be a part of, yeah. not just the tech experts. Right. We need input from ethicists, policymakers, sociologists, and just regular people. Yeah, for sure. The future of AI is something that we should all have a say in. That's a great point. Yeah. This isn't something that should be decided in a closed room somewhere. Nope. It's about having an open dialogue and considering all those different perspectives. I agree. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. From like the nuts and bolts of how this thing works to the broader implications of open source AI. I feel like we've really taken a deep dive. It's been a great conversation. Yeah. The world of AI is constantly changing and yeah. it's really exciting to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note, we'll wrap up this episode of The Deep Dive. But remember, the conversation doesn't end here. Right. We encourage you to keep learning. Stay curious and ask those tough questions. Yeah. The world of AI is full of possibilities and the future is ours to shape. It really is. So until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries. See you next time.